Hey guys, uh, this is Jason, and on this channel, Texas Brew Crafters, we do reviews of Texas-based craft beer breweries and beers. And I wanted to start something new since everyone's stuck at home right now. We're going to do a probably about an every other week right now, a uh, pre-recorded video that we'll re release on Friday evening at 5 p.m. Texas time, Central Standard Time, Central Daylight Time, as it were, right now. And we're going to do a happy hour with... Um, couple different people from around the social media world in Texas, craft beer, whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever, um, I invite you to join us on the show. Today, we've got Walker from Instagram. Uh, he's going to come on. We're going to drink an Oktoberfest, and uh, let's get started. This is the first time we're starting out and, and hopefully it won't be the last. So if you're interested in joining us, if you have an Instagram or YouTube or Twitter channel and you like to talk about craft beer, Facebook page, Facebook group, whatever, put a comment below and be happy to invite you to next time. So uh, Walker, tell us uh, real quick about uh, your Instagram. You're on Instagram. That's your main go-to place for talking about craft beer, right? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram as uh, DF Double Brew. So if you say it real quick, it's DFW uh, with the <laughs> okay. beer spin, but uh, D period F period Double Brew. Yeah. So typically try and focus on as much regional stuff as I can get. I okay. Highlight whatever we have, something that's new on the market. Uh, it's an exploding beer market, so it's always a little fun right. because there's so much new each week. But try and focus on a little bit of that, some more Greater Texas stuff, and. Every yeah. once in a while, I go on vacation, and those will creep back into the feed of, of what I picked up. But a uh, really cool area that we have here for beer, and try and highlight that as best as I can. Cool. Well, thanks for being on. I appreciate you taking the time out today. We're just going to uh, take a few moments today and do a happy hour for um, Oktoberfest, which th these beers just came out a couple weeks ago. Well, maybe maybe three weeks ago at the most, something like mm -hmm. that. And uh, even though it's August, we're going to drink Oktoberfest. <laughs> so I had some, you know, degrees. right, right. Exactly. Yeah. I had some, uh, you know, I bought a couple of six packs of Oktoberfest from Galveston Island Brewing uh, mm -hmm. last year. And I had them in the fridge and I must have drank the last one because I remember seeing it recently. And I think there was one day where I was like, because my, my beer fridge is mostly full of stouts and porters because that's what i like the best but every now and then i'm like you know i want something lighter especially if it's 105 degrees outside and i think i probably tapped into that a couple of months ago where i was like man I, I want a beer but i don't want a really heavy stout and i grabbed my last oktoberfest but galveston island makes a really good one too of course they're uh they're about five hours south of here but uh but we go down there a lot because we have a rental house down there that we we maintain and rent out during the summer mm -hmm. uh, so i'll be back down there in a couple of weeks so i bet the I, I think that their Oktoberfest is probably out by now too, since everybody else is. So, uh, so I've got the I've got the one from Hop and Sting today. It's called a local three one one three, and Hop and Sting is in Grapevine, and they, they do an Oktoberfest every year. And the local three one one three was actually originally a Grapevine Craft Brewery uh, Oktoberfest, and the three one one three has something to do with the local fire department. I forget exactly what it is, um, but they've kept they kept the name, they kept the style, they kept the Marzen. Um, style lager that they call the Oktoberfest and uh, they still contribute. I think that they donate a certain percentage to the local fire department for, for all these beers that are sold. So that's kind of a neat. Yeah, kind of a neat addition to it. Right. So what I have is the Raw and Sons Oktoberfest, but it's the Oktoberfest. So it's their barrel aged version of it. Really? Now this comes in a two pack box, which is really cool. Two pack? Um, yeah. So almost in a way that you, you have the barrel aged cans, you get two cans of it, comes in a smaller box. Okay. So that way, you know, you're looking at 12 ounces. Sometimes these barrel aged beers we get come in a big 500, 750 milliliter bottle. You know, something right. Like that. That's a little much than you may be wanting to sit down with that night. So the two boxes mm -hmm. right then, I actually bought mine on a good deal through their drive through. Uh, right now they've got beer to go. And so they yeah. advertise what the deal was. So, I was able to buy two of the packages and it came with two pint glasses for oh. $20 and 20 cents. Uh, didn't have to leave my car. It was pretty wild. Uh, the, the line was backed up several blocks as I drove. By yeah, I bet. And, and saw it. So 
you know, while it looks like that a lot of these October festival, Oktoberfest uh, festivals that we're going to have, would be having in the fall, are not happening. No, probably but not. A, a cool way, because I, I believe I had this style last year at an event they had, but nice to bring it home, have it available, uh, and, and only have to break into it 12 ounces at a time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I did not, I have, I, to my knowledge, to my recollection, I should say, I don't think I've ever had a barrel-aged Oktoberfest. Um, I, so I, I think that is that's either. something that's new to me. So I I don't. I don't know that I've had. Reason, I want to think that. Now I'm I'm more than willing to be wrong, but I think that uh, uh, Hop and Sting may be doing one as well this year. May not be out yet, but I was under the belief that they may be trying. But definitely. Not something I've been seeing, or if places no. do it, maybe it was a tap room exclusive. But I certainly don't believe I've been able to take home a can of it before. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I guess that would make sense if you know some of the breweries may do like a in 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 tap room only type thing. You know, come in and get some that 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 kind of thing. The thing I like about the ones that are even doing that, just just generally speaking, not really just. Uh, Oktoberfest, but, um, you know, because it, apparently it costs a lot of money to can a beer. You have to, you have to brew a certain amount of it and buy the cans and, and do the canning process. And some of these smaller batch stuff, you know, a lot of times the breweries don't, don't, um, they don't can it, but, and, and most places do growler fills and growler fills are great. I've got like six growlers in the house. And every time I go up to a brewery and I'm like, man, I wish, I, I wish you had that in cans. They're like, Oh, you can buy a growler. And I'm like, I've got six empty growlers at home. <laughs> I don't need another growler. I need to start carrying one in my car. But the newest one, the newest kind of th new newish kind of thing, is what Turning Point has, which is their crowler machine. So they give you the thirty-two ounce can, and then mm -hmm. they they fill it up from the tap, and then they seal it, and they put it in this machine that seals it, and then it's good. And then you don't have to feel like you have to drink it the next day or two, like like you would a growler. So I thought that that was kind of a neat, uh, so, so that's usually, if I go into a new brewery, I'm usually like, hey, do you guys have a crowler machine? And probably about 50% of the time they say they do. Um, I had to drive up to Colorado last month. Uh, my wife and I volunteer with a dog rescue organization. They do transports. They'll take dogs from the rescue here and transport them up there to the rescue and trade them back and forth. So I stopped at all the craft breweries in the, after I, took, after I got there and dropped the dogs off, I stopped at three or four craft breweries around the place and pretty much all of them had crowler machines. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I want a crowler of that and that because they, those are the ones, there's their specialty ones that they didn't have in cans or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, new, new ways of distribution, especially as people right. are adapting and, you know, canning lines are so expensive mm -hmm. and that's, you know, a, a way of getting some of these smaller batch things out there or just right now, it, at least for Texas, everyone's trying whatever they can do to get the beers out there. Sometimes right. I know Petacolis does the crawlers where they have their special ones where they'll do uh, a variant, especially on Fridays. It'll be, you know, fruited beer, something like that, where they'll add to the, the beer that they're releasing. So it's a little scary sometimes to have a 10, 12% beer at 32 ounces uh, right. so you, you you've got your evening planned for you right yeah but nice you know nice to be able to pick them up and not need to worry about immediately drinking it uh, but it's also not something that maybe something you pick up at a kroger or your local beer store I, what i've done with my last one or two is i take them i take the i open the can and i pour the can into my 32 ounce growler and then I have a day or two to drink it. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't, that way I don't feel like mentally it, 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 it cause in the back of my mind, I'm like, I got to drink this whole thing right now. It's 32 ounces. I mean, I, you know, obviously I can take a few hours to do it. I don't have to down the whole thing, but you know, oh, come but, on. shotgun it. <laughs> depending on which one it is, I may not want to do that, but, uh, but you know, if I pour it into the growler, I'm like, Oh, okay. Now it's in the growler. I can put it in the fridge and come back to it tomorrow after work, you know, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like a, a mental block for myself to not drink too much in one evening, but <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, the way to go. Yeah. So how but, is your beer? It's good. It's good. They, they, uh, I guess they change the formula up a little bit every year, but it's pretty, um, I did a, it. This, this is pretty good. It's, it's, it's light. It's, um, crisp. And it's got the it's got the kind of the the Marzen flavor to it. I mean, if that makes any sense. 
Um, I think a couple of years ago, I did a thing. I didn't do a video of it or anything, but I did a I did a kind of a test for myself. I went and bought up a bunch of different Oktoberfests from around the area. Um, I did get the Rar and Sons, but I didn't get their barrel aged. I don't even know if they did it back then. But I got theirs, and I got the one from I think Martin House, and um, who else was it? Uh, well, Shiner had one at the time. I, I tried it. It was it wasn't that. It was okay. It was all right. Here feels a little different to me on that one. Yeah. And uh, somebody else had one locally, and I can't remember who it was right now. It was not Community, um, but it was somebody like that. And um, it might have been Patikless or... Um, like Lakewood or something? I don't think Oak it was Island. Lake. Who? Oak Island. It might have been them. I don't think it was Lakewood. I don't think it was Lakewood. It was one, but it was one of those down there somewhere. And, uh, and I, and out of all those that I had at the time, the RAR was actually my favorite one that year. Um, and that's won several awards at great American yeah. beer festival. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought that that one was, was, was quite tasty. So I'm um, not everybody does a, an Oktoberfest at turning point. I don't think they're planning on doing one last. I asked them about it. Um, but, yeah, it's. I think this year is always tough to tell on who's doing what as well. Um, have you been up to the um, um, Fall Seidel place yes. up there? Okay. So both of those, they had their opening last weekend for the tap room. It was somewhat of a softer, unannounced opening, but I know I, I was seeing people who were able to hang out a little bit. They put a patio out front. Okay. I think is, is how they're able to work around that right now. Okay. But uh, definitely a nice area, great quality beer. It's a half a mile down the road from uh, Brutal. Works. From Brutal, so, yeah. You know, super, super good if you're going out to get a, uh, going on a beer run. That, yeah. You know, being able to maximize that because it wasn't that long ago, just a little over two years ago, that uh, Hop and Sting was what we had in the mid cities. Yeah. You have to go down to Arlington to get to legal draft or division, but we didn't have a whole lot, you know, off the airport freeway in that area. And yeah. so when Turning Point opened up, it was great yeah. for me, right, just down the road, but kind of a trek for other people. And so it's nice having a few of those options available and seeing how much the market's grown with yeah. that, because there's still a lot of projects people are working on. Uh, I know there are several in Fort Worth that are moving along just seeing that become connected and got to give people credit who are brave and opening right now. True. True. Yeah. I, I've been, uh, I've been trying to communicate with some of these guys and just say, you know, how, how are you guys doing? You know? And they're like, well, it's obviously hard, but, uh, but most of them are pretty thankful for, for the to go sales. And generally speaking, when I go up to these breweries and if they've got a table sitting out front, it's obvious they're not open, you know, cause that keeps changing also. I mean, who can keep up with, with what the rule is today? Um, if they're not open, but they're just doing the co to go thing. My experience has been that, you know, they may have two or three people standing in line, not a lot, you know, a couple, three people, but everybody's buying like a hundred bucks worth of beer. <laughs> like give me a four pack of that and that and that and two, four packs of that one. So I'm like, well, that's good. You know, supporting your local craft beer brewery because you want them to be around when everything does open back up. Um, so uh, that's always. I feel good. like such a cheapskate sometimes when I'll go places um, if I'm just picking up a four pack. Remember, yeah. You're going to pick up at Martin House, things like that, where they've got several wild and crazy releases yeah. that week. And there have been lines wrapped around the building because I think they could only have 10 people in at a time. And so you really distance out. So I appreciate them doing it that way. Right. And then you'll have someone in front of you who maxes out uh, the number of ounces. I think it's 288 or something like that, but <laughs> that's a quick. And yeah. you know, they're raising your hand. Being, I'll have one four pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, can only drink so much, uh, but right. uh, it, it is encouraging to see that of people just really going all out every once in a while. You'll see, especially on the weekends, people doing you know, supporting the brewery beer runs in the area, and they'll put their tailgate down, and it's got to equal a fridge full. And I don't know oh, how yeah. many hundreds of dollars it equals. Uh, and I would just do the math in my head about like how do you how do you work through all of this? And yeah. I think people 
you know, hand it off to friends and do trades and things like that. Yeah. But yeah. just really, truly impressive. Of, yeah. That's a lot of miles we're putting on each day. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not supporting these places right now, is now's the time to really show up. True. I always try and get all over the area as best I can. And I don't know if that's, uh, you know, a little scratch here and there, but just any sale is important. I, um, I did a, I did a beer run about a month ago and I started out in, well, I went, I went down to, uh, I went down to Cowtown Brewing mm-hmm. and I didn't end, I think I ended up, I think I ate some lunch down there and I had a beer there and I thought, you know, I'm going to go do a trek through mid cities. And I started at Shannon and I went up to mm-hmm. Shannon in, uh, in Keller. And then I came down and I hit brutal. I hit false idol. I hit turning point, And then I hit hop and sting and uh and hop and sting they've got some good stuff but their stuff is um what's the word i'm looking for you know they've got all their staples all the time and sometimes they have new stuff which there's nothing wrong with that i I don't mean that in a negative way Mm -hmm. but it's like every time you go into turning point you find like two or three new ones that you've never heard you're like oh wow when did that come about you know their selection is phenomenal Mm -hmm. at turning point and i found that um uh brutal is kind of like that although quite frankly i've not found anything i've fallen in love with it brutal yet yeah. but uh but the false idol stuff is i'm i'm still kind of new to that i've only had two or three of their beers and the ones i've had i like they have a blondale that's pretty good um they're um they have a stout that they were brewing last time i was up there so i they, they didn't have any for sale i forget what it's called but um, but it's nice to go around and just kind of see what everyone's doing right now and and try to, to to support people in that regard because it's like yeah like you said you know it's like now is the time to show up for all these places if if you want them to be there in a few months when everything opens back up so well and it, it leads to an interesting argument of say the hop and sting versus a turning point where a turning point you show up every week completely different menu yeah uh, you know you're, there's going to be a double or triple ipa you know, you're going to have several hazies on there you're going to have one or two stouts you maybe ha- have some random one i know they'll you know, do the the sour straws and um, yeah. things like that so there will be a random there probably a, a barrel aged stout release around then but you know, if you're not relying on looking on untapped, things like that, of what the current menu is, you're, you're just not really sure. Opposed to, say, Hop and Sting, you're going to be sure of, if I go in, I'm going to know that the eight core beers, there may be a seasonal or a surprise. And so it's real interesting of, while both craft beer, very different business models. Yeah, yeah. And where, Agreed. you know, Brutal relies so much, or I mean, uh, Turning Point relies so much on people trekking out there, loading up a flat with as much beer as they can, yeah. and, and really doing that distribution themselves, where I can go into most grocery stores, uh, any craft beer stores in the area, and find all of Hop and Sting's beers, all of, you know, all of Rar's beer, all of mm-hmm. communities for the most part, mm-hmm. uh, and knowing what those staples are. So it's interesting of what one's better. I don't know, uh, but definitely for uh, breweries that are less than 10 minutes apart from each other, mm-hmm. very different approach to it. For, for sure. I have, a, I have a friend outside of Portland, Oregon, and of course there's a big, really big craft beer scene up there. And, uh, like a year ago, he texts me and he's like, hey, have you ever heard of Turning Point? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, how do you know about them? He's like, I've got some friends here who got some, that apparently they had traded with somebody. And, you know, Turning Point's not for sale. And we were talking before we hit the camera, we were talking about Hall's Grocery and Grapevine Beer and Wine. I've never seen Turning Point for sale in a store. Now, a few of the bars around here will have them on tap. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I've seen their, um, um, I can't remember which one it is right now. It's a couple of their stouts, maybe one of their IPAs. And uh, on uh, at Ron's Corner Tavern up there in Bedford, or I think that's Bedford. Um, mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, maybe the brass tap had one or two at one point in time. Um, but I don't know how they distribute because they don't like, like there's people coming in there from all over the place. Every, go into turning points uh, during Thanksgiving week and, you know, just strike up a conversation with somebody and, and find out how many, <laughs> find out how many people are from out of town. Cause like, Oh yeah, I'm in town visiting my nephew this weekend. And 
we're, he, I'm going to buy four cases and drive it back to where, I, where I'm from. I talk to people that like that all the time in there during, during the week of Thanksgiving because they, Turning Point always has some holiday flavors and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I don't know how they do what they do, but they are, they are well known in outside of the area for sure. Yeah. And so we have several places that just rely on that distribution where a few places that they have a relationship with get a keg or two of it. But in terms of an actual can, that can was bought at the same register as every other can that you see. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know we have Turning Point, Brutal, Pulse Idol right now does that. In Dallas, you look at Celestial. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of people are, are putting that together of mm-hmm. drawing that traffic in and just having such a strong reputation that like as you mentioned earlier someone's going to go in and spend a hundred bucks right here and there's a good chance they're not drinking any of that but they're doing that through trades they're yeah. helping other buddies uh, I've, I've met several people who they have proxies they'll get picked up and they'll drive it out to different places in texas and no oh, yeah uh, the finder fee on that is, is phenomenal. <laughs> um, I like, you know, I, I, I don't even know how I'd have that conversation a lot of times, but I think it's just one of those, they want it, they find ways to get it. But, right. uh, you know, you've right. always got to be careful too with some of these real fruited beers, especially is temperature control. Yeah. And so yeah. people may be shipping these or just even not having them in the fridge for a while. And those cans will burst. Yeah, a lot of they can. Like and a, a hazy beer that warms up, you know, and in a, a period of time that it's been in a warmer room temperature is, you know, the flavor is going to fall off a little bit. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the, what they're willing to deal with to get yeah. those beers. And it's yeah. uh, it's its own funny little economy. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, how, how is, uh, how's that one tasting? This one's really good. Uh, it's 9.6%. Mm-hmm. So uh, a nice, a nice quality beer there. There was a, a big frothy head on it when I poured it in the glass. Mm-hmm. Had a real nice lacing. I wish I could show it on this, but real nice lacing along the glass. Mm. You definitely feel the, you taste the bourbon right oh, away, okay. or the okay. bourbon barrel. You definitely get the barrel uh, on that first sip. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have too long of a tail, but after that initial bourbon taste, it, it settles into the Oktoberfest. It settles, settles into the Mars and really tasty. Uh, you definitely want to be mindful of it because this is one that you, you could, it's an easy drinker for a barrel aged beer. It's, it's an easy drinking beer and you'd want to be careful not to have too many right away. Right. And that's the beauty of it being in a two can package, mm. but not, uh, but really enjoyable. I'd love to be pairing this with food. I'd love to have this at an October fest festival yeah. or just be around other people in general. <laughs> uh, True. But, a uh, terrific beer, and I think the I think the two packs are about ten dollars, which I think is very fair. They come in boxes that are similar to what Martin House does with their barrel aged mm-hmm. beers. It, it's great to put in the fridge if you keep it that way. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. If I keep it in my door, I don't have to worry about it falling out. If someone opens it up too quickly, but you know, overall, really good quality from an award winning recipe as it was. They took a a recipe that was there proven and has won several medals at great american beer festival mm-hmm. and threw it in barrels and you got to give them credit for doing that this year of adapting and figuring out what works best and, and getting it out on market because it's mm-hmm. tricky to add new things out there right now yeah. especially in, in different formats for sure are they do you know if they still have those are they sold out it seems like that was something they'd sell out of pretty quickly yeah, so they have, it's being distributed throughout DFW. Okay. I've seen it um, in a couple stores, pretty much anywhere you'd get craft beer. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, any, with a little bit more of a specialty selection. I, I know some Kroger's are real good with beer. The yeah, one by of, me is not so much, but yeah. everyone always tells me their Kroger has things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go to, I believe Total Wine Specs mm-hmm. would have it. So widely distributed through the area. Okay. I don't know how long it lasts because I think a lot yeah. of people order it real quick, but uh, available throughout the area, which is nice. Good. And sometimes it's just not having to drive 40, 50 miles to pick up two cans is <laughs> true. <laughs> I mean, I'm not above it. <laughs> no, I've, I've certainly done it before. Um, 
you know, I, and I'll, I'll go check out my, my two local hunts that I, uh, frequent to, to get specialty ones. And now that I know, know what I'm looking for, I may go check that out. In fact, I don't think I've been back. I don't think I've been to either of those places in the last couple of weeks since the Oktoberfest really started dropping. I've been to some breweries, but not into the actual beer store. So, um, it may be time to kind of revisit that and look for some stuff that's, uh, that's new, newly released. Yeah, I know it was a little eye rolling when they first announced when it was being released because it was 105. And right. It was miserable and not, not the style I was really thinking of having at that moment. But yeah. uh, maybe I think if we drink, drink enough of these, we can have a little, you know, wish some cooler weather on ourselves. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, but a good variety, good option, uh, and available. And the market's really changing. And it's fun to go out to support these places. Another important totally. thing is we're coming up just a little over a week away from the year anniversary of Beer to Go, which that's right. Uh, several of these it was September first, so mm -hmm. several of the places in the area, such as Community, RAR, weren't able to sell cans if you went there. Right. And mm -hmm. now you can, and mm -hmm. you think of where we'd be without that oh, ability. Yeah. But you know how the tap room culture changes, how it'll change after this. Uh, being able to get people in there. Hey, I'll grab a six pack to go. Mm -hmm. In most places, I think they'll pick up a beer on tap before I couldn't do that. And that's mm -hmm. extra money staying at the brewery, moving sales. So definitely a big thing that we were fortunate to have in the market mm -hmm. and enough time, six months to get dialed in before people had to really dive into to go or not. Right. Yeah, definitely. Well, Cool, man. Well, hey, this is about the length of uh, of episode I wanted to shoot. Um, again, I will uh, I'll, I'll, I'll um, hit you up uh, in a. I, I was kind of wanting to do this about once every other week or so, and see what kind of uh, response we get from it. Um, so when I post it, I appreciate it if you share it on your Instagram. I'll do the same thing, of course, and I'll I'll put a link to your Instagram in the YouTube description, so that yeah, people sounds can good. find them both that way. But uh, yeah, let us know um, if you're watching and you want to comment below on the YouTube video. Uh, let us know what Oktoberfest you're drinking right now and which one's your favorite. And uh, what kind of beer should we drink next time? Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably post this at 5 o'clock on Friday this week. All right. Just for a nice uh, like nationwide cheers, hashtag nationwide cheers that community started at the whole beginning of the pandemic thing. And uh, so do that. But um, we'll have a couple weeks and we'll decide what to drink next time. So. Appreciate always, you being here today. Always have a cold beer in the fridge, so you just yeah. let me know. Yeah, great. Well, I appreciate you be being here today, man. It, it was uh, it was a good uh, good discussion, and uh, I'd like to see how we go forward with it. Cool, and enjoy the rest of your beer. Thanks for having me. Right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. We'll see you. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed this episode and you would like to be involved in perhaps a future happy hour episode on Texas Brew Crafters, uh, put a comment below. Uh, hit me up. My email address is contact at texasbrewcrafters.tv email me tell me if you're uh if if you have a social media outlet somewhere on facebook instagram twitter youtube whatever doesn't really matter if you're interested in coming onto the show drinking beer with us and just talking about the overall state of affairs in texas heck if you're outside of texas and you just want to come on the show and drink a happy hour beer with us you're welcome to do that as well so hit me up um thanks for watching and uh hope to hear from you